Got it. Moving on. Ah, huh, that good old CGI greatness never gets old. Anyways, welcome back, True Believers, and all you spectacular Spidey fans to another very interesting Spider-Man related video that I thought would be fun to put out for all you to enjoy because it does seem like some of you guys are interested in learning or seeing more about this very underrated Spider-Man cartoon slash animated series that is my personal favorite Spider-Man animated type of format that we have seen out there besides that of course with the film of Into the Spider-Verse but for an animated series I still think this one stands out the most amongst the rest and does have a lot and I do mean a lot of very underrated episodes that showcase Spider-Man in a very intriguing way that you aren't usually used to, but also showcasing a narrative that isn't afraid to take risks and go a bit darker than what we're used to with the standard Spider-Man norm. And of course, I am talking about Spider-Man, the new animated series. Now, we have done a few videos about this show already. I have done a full review about it all the way back in 2018. Go check that out. I recently re uh, revisited the show with the 18-year anniversary, which was very fun, and we watched the first episode of the show, kind of going back after, I think it's been like a couple years since I saw the first episode fully in detail, start to finish, which was Heroes and Villains with Turbojet, which was great, and I also had the privilege of interviewing the crew who is making their own fan-made season two of the show, continuing the universe and kind of putting their own spin on the series in a very intriguing way. So there are still a lot of fans of this show out there that are in love with this character and this iteration of the character just as much as I am, which I love to see. Now, I did see some of you guys in the comments say you would love to see more of this. However, I probably will not go and watch every single episode start to finish because first off, that would be a big issue with copyright <laughs> uh, claims and also just a lot of things to deal with from the Sony side of things since they still kind of own the rights to the show. But I did want to kind of just go and watch another episode of the series, one that I think is pretty unanimously decided from, I would say, the majority of fans to be the best episode of the entire show. And for me personally, it is my own favorite episode from the entirety of Spider-Man the New Animated Series. I specifically love, from what I remember, that this episode, I think, out of all the others, ties in with the Raimi-verse aesthetic of the series the most. So there are a lot of connections from the first movie with Peter and Harry's characters, and also some stuff here and there with Mary Jane, but also, of course, with the main villain of this episode of Law of the Jungle, with none other than Dr. Connors as the Lizard, voiced crazy enough by Rob freaking Zombie. Yes, you heard that right. That is a fact, and it is actually one of the most interesting casting decisions I've probably seen in any form of Spider-Man media, but he actually does a really darn good job with the character in the show. So I thought it'd be fun just to kind of look back at what I believe to be what the best is that this show has to offer, kind of highlight the best bits of it, and just react to the episode again from start to finish, just like I did with Heroes and Villains, and just relive the greatness that is, again, Spider-Man the New Animated Series with this very, very interesting take on the character of the Lizard, Dr. Connors, and also seeing what Spider-Man does in the episode with this character is actually really, really cool. And here we are with the episode itself, Spider-Man the New Animated Series, Episode 3, Law of the Jungle, featuring Spider-Man and the Lizard. So this is, yes, the third episode of the series, which is interesting because the first episode which we saw was Heroes and Villains with Turbojet, and the episode that takes place in between both of those, episode two, is Royal Scam with the Kingpin, voiced crazy enough by Michael Clark Duncan, who played Kingpin in the 2003 Daredevil movie. So it's really cool to get that tie-in with not just the Raimi Spider-Man movies, but also another Marvel superhero film with Ben Affleck's Daredevil, which is really, really cool that they try to seemingly connect all these superhero franchises from the films in the early 2000s together in this mainstream type of show. Who says college is all about cracking the books and all-nighters in the library? We're really all here to have fun, fun, fun. I can confirm this. Unfortunately, when I say we, I don't mean me. There's our boy. Generally, I'm a single fun kind of guy. Maybe without the exclamation point? Parker, what the hell are you doing? Glamidosaurus kingy. The frilled <laughs> lizard attacked by a predator. It'll leave its tail behind so it can escape, only to grow a new one later. Interesting feature. 
And? And I suppose if man could do that, you're finally getting it. I love this. The prosthetic arm is a nice touch, too. I kind of get a little bit of a Spider-Man PS4 vibe, to be honest, where Peter is helping a villain or one of his beforehand villains create the the antidote or the, you know, the formula, I should say, not antidote, but the method in which they actually transition into their villain aside. So for the, the show, it's the, you know, the lizard DNA and this formula that he's helping Doc Connors work on. And then the game, it's, of course, the prosthetic arms, which is very cool. You get that really cool uh, duality between Peter, his human side, and the Spider-Man villain side, and they're easing you into it. And it's you can only do so much with a 22-minute long episode, but you know, right off the bat, showcasing how this is already an established relationship between Peter and Doctor Connors, and seeing where he goes next with this formula that Peter just helped him make is very intense. <laughs> The horror imagery here is always a nice touch. You kind of get that Raimi vibe going because uh, Sam Raimi in the first movie really did kind of like a re interesting like jump scare type tactics with Green Goblin. So they're trying to keep it feeling like it's a continuation of that first movie with not only the kind of over exaggerated visuals but also kind of like the, the more darker moody you know tone that they're trying to strike for these uh, character dynamics between the villains and Spider-Man. Music like this needs to come back. I don't understand why... A, music like this is not around anymore, but B, there's not any, like, current Marvel cartoons, Spider-Man, Avengers, or otherwise, you know, whoever it is, that have, like, a catchy engaging theme like you know like oh like you see it like for example the iron man arm and adventures theme got me amped to see that show every time an episode came on and the same thing it goes for this so what kind of fun 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 are we having tonight um well harry was having me look at his dad's will yeah and uh well i was checking out the view of the oscorp building to see where my dad's office is do balloons come with that package? Okay, you guys. The writing here is excellent. I don't care what anyone says. You can dislike the animation all you want. I totally understand if it's not visually appealing, but right here, the writing between Harry, Peter, and MJ, it always shines in each episode. So give the laptop a rest. I'll buy you a mochaccino. Oh my god, the laptop. I forgot to give Doc Connors tonight's readouts. Classic Parker look! I love it. He has to struggle still. He wants to hang out with his friends, but sadly his responsibilities get the best of him. It's the slight details like that. And it wasn't intentionally, oh, I gotta go and be Spider-Man. No, you just like, I genuinely forgot something to do for Dr. Connors, and I gotta go help him out as Peter, but then unknowingly he then has to go and suit up and become Spider-Man to then save him from this, this thug. We'll see who gets wiped out. Here we go, this chase sequence, look at how fast he wall crawls. The music here is so good too. Oh my god, look at this wall crawling animation right here. Do you see what he's doing? Ah, that's so clean. You you always see him like wall run on the side. Um, what I love about the show the most is whenever they portray Spider-Man either in the day, you know, daytime or nighttime, like pay close attention to his uh, costumes coloring. Uh, and I don't, I know for a fact that the animators wanted to make it closely resemble the Ultimate Comics, but whenever he's moving, he's like this really cool looking red and blue blur. Like he's, he's going so fast, like you just see like a, a quick streak of, of red and blue go across the screen. And the wall crawling on the side, how fast he runs, is the coolest thing that the show has done with Spider-Man's traversal abilities. I love what they did here. Well, guess this one didn't count on getting- Fun fact! Um, Officer Barr here, uh, this police officer that we kind of see in different episodes, yeah. he's voiced by the same person who voiced J. Jonah Jameson in the 90s show. So I love how they kind of got back some old stars from the previous Spider-Man animated outings. But then you get the new flavor with Neil and, and Rob, you know, coming in to voice Peter and, and uh, Kurt, you know? I love that. See anything, kid? Uh, no, it all happened so fast. How do you know how fast it happened if you didn't see it? Uh, actually... I, um... You kids. I love this! 
I don't care, like, what anyone says about how this doesn't feel like, you know, what you're used to with Spider-Man media from, like, the Ultimate Comics or even, like, the Raimi-verse since this is connected to that and it doesn't feel like Toby's Spider-Man. I'm ju I just kind of see this as, like a, like, a pocket dimension in a way. Like, this is a different spin on the Spider-Man character while just using the Raimi stuff at, like, face value just to kind of enhance the story for narrative purposes. But the detailing of Spider-Man and Peter's characters, how they speak, Peter is very nonchalant. He's a little bit shy. He's a little bit reserved, especially when talking to a cop, an authority figure. He's very, like, you know, closeted in a way. He doesn't want to come off as any aggressive type of person or, or in a behavior. But when he's Spider-Man, he's all cocky. He's he's deeper with his voice. He's He comes off as more, of course, stronger. Uh you know, more heroic, of course, but just that duality, and you really feel like that they are two completely different people while they still share, of course, the same identity as one another. It's insane. So I don't get it. The doc sent you home. But I don't think I really processed it when I was a kid, but this scene, and you know, seeing it now, if a kid were to see this today, it might give them nightmares, to be honest. Me, I just thought it was cool. Which is funny, because you would think that a kid watching this show back in the day would kind of scar them for life. Like, this is Spider-Man, but you show, like, crazy, gruesome violence and, you know, uh, in intense, more mature themes. But for me, I just saw this as, like, realistic and really cool and a, and a really interesting narrative to portray these Spider-Man characters. Ooh, I love this shot where he suits up. Oh, God. It gets me amped to see that, like, the quick... how Because you guys, they don't really display that in any other form of Spider-Man media. Spider-Man's actually really, really fast. Look at that, how he crawls up the vent, how he chases after Lizard right here. The, the animation de detailing is insanely articulate with how they portray the movements of Spider-Man. The Lizard design, too. Quick shots. This is how Lizard should have come off in the Amazing Spider-Man 1 movie. Dark, scary, actually looking like a lizard instead of like a human-shaped lizard. The swinging here. The jungle tribal music. This, I, it is a crime. It is a flat-out crime that this show's soundtrack, specifically for this episode, has not released publicly yet. The, the, the fight thematic music that we get between Spider-Man and Lizard, what we're going to hear soon is one of the best soundtrack scores I've ever heard for a Spider-Man villain encounter. And it's for a show. It's not for a movie or a game. It's for a, an animated cartoon. And it's super on point to portray Lizard in that way. It's an it's an animal at that point. At, at that point, um, Kurt Connors is gone. You know, he he's lost his humanity and he's trying to just go and seek revenge against Oscorp and thinking that Harry is Norman. But, uh, it really portrays that anger and that rage and this animalistic instinct that he has as the lizard in a perfect way. And it's something I wish we saw more of in not just this show, but other forms of Spider-Man media. Government contractor. Testing new kind of explosive. You were involved in that? Of course not. Studying reptiles. Georgia's swamp. This is so good. There. How they approach this. You get the insight about why Dr. Connors wants to pursue his whole lizardness or this formula to, you know, regenerate himself and his arm, but also his disdain towards Oscorp and why he does what he does. And blending it with the the narrative from the first Raimi film is excellent. This shot. Oh my god, the design is so good. I don't know why we have we haven't seen Lizard look like this in more forms of media. Insomniac, if you're listening, when Lizard is in Marvel Spider-Man 2, make him look like this. Please and thank you. I just need some time to digest this stuff is all. There's so much about my Really humanizing Harry and the inner demons that he's facing, not just with himself and how he wants to kind of go forward with the Oscorp company, but also confronting the past sins of his father. You know, and what Norman did behind the scenes, what we just learned from uh, Doc Connors with the, you know, the secret government testing from Oscorp for, you know, military-grade weapons. And how that had a huge impact on not just the company, but also the, the people that it affected in a broader scale. All three have DNA from the same individual, Dr. Connors. 
The mood lighting here is really good. But the genetic sequencing has changed. I love how they're blending in the comic aesthetic colors of each character. Spider-Man is blue or red, you know, Harry, we kind of get the green for the Green Goblin a little bit later. And also the lizard we get, of course, kind of like darkness because of how it's just pure black in his heart now because of what he wants to do going after Oscorp. Oscorp! So that's the end of Doc Connors right there. He's full lizard right now. But it's cool because he can understand what's happening. But looking like a beast. Looking like a savage. And I brought this up on Twitter the other day that he looks exactly like his Ultimate Comics counterpart. Which looks excellent. And I wish that that's, again, how we saw more of Lizard in mainstream media. A beast. A, a, a vicious, feral creature that needs to be stopped. And this show capture that perfectly in my eyes the horror themes here the quick cuts between spider-man harry and the lizard in this fire axe scene 2 classic shining moment running down the hallway excellent insane this is disgusting but awesome at the same time he grows them back in seconds Iconic shot. Iconic cinematography right here. I love the lighting too with the, the darkness and shadow encapsulating the lizard right there and Spider-Man walking right above him. Like, it looks so clean. Honestly, I think this animation has aged way better than what we're currently seeing on Disney XD with Marvel Spider-Man and even some of the Ultimate Spider-Man episodes. Hey, Scaly. Know where I can get a little tail? <laughs> And then they brawl, dude! Oh, it's just a slugfest between the two. Look how massive he is, by the way, the lizard. What, Peter's like 5'10", I think? I think the lizard, if he was standing straight up, I think he'd be like 7, 8 feet tall. Like, it's crazy. Like, the strength that he has, the, the reflexes. This shot! Pure cinema. It's not even a movie, but that is cinema right there. I love that! I think I can help you. I know all about your experiments. I still go back from time to time to watch this fight. Like, not the full episode in depth from start to finish. But mainly if I just want to kind of reminisce about Spider-Man the New Inmade series. And just see what it really brought to the table in terms of Spider-Man media. I literally just go back from time to time and watch this. Like, the fight scene, while it is really quick, um, shows the strengths of the show... Shows the potential for what we could have seen in the future if they wanted to keep Kirk Connors around. But also, like, just really cool action sequences blending the 3D animation and the movesets that we know that Spider-Man the Lizard can do from the comics. And just, you know, refurbishing them for a new era at the time because 3D animation for this was really brand new. Yikes, dude! That is nasty. They got away with a full-on, just partial, you know amputation for the lizard right here dude and it's the same arm the right arm that's poetic genus aranei at your service rest in peace rob zombie or dr connors to be specific but damn that's crazy that they just got him in and out like that so quickly all you can think of is your friend harry no, i think of myself plenty it's just mm -hmm. Thanks for letting me do that. Not a problem. You see the struggles that Peter has to go through, but yet at the end of the day, he's still appreciated for just okay. being Maybe himself and just being there for his friends, just being a genuinely nice guy. And move. their chemistry on and off between Indy, MJ, and himself is always excellent. And you're gonna end it on a dark note like that? Like, dude, it's so good! The inner turmoil that Harry continues to go through day in and day out, and they don't even show it throughout other episodes, but he acts all cool and suave and rich, you know, because he's this very philanthropic type of guy. But right there, like, he's still dealing with the trauma of him losing his dad and having to step up and kind of do things for the company, but also just coping with, did he really know his dad? Did he really know who Norman was? you know, through and through, or was he just kind of led on to believe that that is who he thinks his dad was and not really understanding 
exactly who he is because, of course, he's the Green Goblin. So, yeah, guys, that is my personal favorite episode of Spider-Man the New Animated Series. It is excellent from start to finish. I love the performances from Neil in the show in particular. I think Rob Zombie was a good guest voice to have for the few bits of dialogue we heard of him as Kurt Connors. But the standout is obviously the third act, I would say, of the episode, which is near the finale where Spider-Man fights Lizard in the Oscorp Tower, which is so well done. The choreography, the wall, you know, kind of not combat, but just the wall um, interaction between the Lizard and Spider-Man on the side of the building and then going up to the rooftop and then, you know, having that really dark moment of trying to realize, like, wow, he can't be saved. Um, and it sucks because he's, he's been blinded by rage and hatred for Oscorp and Norman, uh, not, you know, thinking at that time it was Norman, but really it was Harry, who was completely innocent in the matter, but still trying to go out and seek revenge for how they took his arm from him, pretty much. So, connecting the Raimi-verse aesthetic with the Oscorp matters, with Norman's character and Dr. Connors, who's completely different from how he's portrayed in the films, and also really showcasing a new light on... Peter's character and Harry's dynamic relationship, not only with his father, but also Spider-Man. Because right there, he's like, you know, what are you helping me for? And he's about to hit him, but then he kind of lets him do his thing. And he's slowly conflicted. He's, he's going more and more conflicted. Like, do I really hate Spider-Man? Do I really know my dad? Like, what's going on? Who am I really? And who is my dad? And more so, who is Spider-Man? You know, what does Spider-Man mean to me? Is he a murderer or is he someone maybe I could possibly rely on down the line which we kind of see closer to i would say the second electro episode the sparks will fly i think it's called but the the whole you know duality dichotomy between peter and spider-man and also the relationships that we see with the main trio is is so good but the animation i think in this episode stands out the most i would say amongst the rest there are a lot of other good highlight ones like the electro one the Electro episodes, either the, the party or uh, when sparks fly, and also I would say the Kingpin one has some good moments, uh, and Turbo Jet was great too, and the Silver Sable one, in general, I love the whole show, so I can't really <laughs> differentiate any type of episode, which one's better or worse, and I don't really know which episode I would clarify as the worst possible episode, just from an objective viewpoint, but I would say personally, I know which episode I dislike the most. So, if you guys do want to see another video like this where I react as I did with the best episode of the whole series, I can then easily react to what I, what I think and what some most people think to be the worst episode of the series. I can easily do that too. And I just love talking about this show in more ways than I can possibly think of. And seeing you guys share your passion for it as well really makes me as a fan of the series all the more happier to kind of get more people invested into what this really great show had to offer back in the day and what I think it still has to offer nowadays. So with all that said, everyone, that is the video that I have for you today reacting to Law of the Jungle within Spider-Man, the new animated series. Let me know all your thoughts in the comment section down below. Feel free to leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy. We are very close, extremely close to 70,000 subscribers. I couldn't thank you enough. I think we're less than 100 away. I really, really hope that we can get to that number by the end of July because once we do, we are going to do another charity live stream, which is going to be very, very exciting and some very very hype inducing stuff is in store for the channel i would say within the next coming week or so so if you're excited leave a like subscribe and it would mean the world to me but until next time everyone thank you all so much for watching stay spectacular spidey fans peace out